I have eight random questions here. You will pick three numbers one at a time because I won't remember okay. them. And then whatever Same. you pick, that is the questions that we will start with. Done, let's play. One through eight, what is your first number? Seven. God, one of my favorite ones first. This one is called Scream. You could probably guess the question. What's your favorite scary movie? Oh, boy. I mean, I love my Jenna Ortega so much, and I just watched Scream. Um, she was brilliant in that. There's another one that she's in that I just watched recently. X. Anything X? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, she crushed it in that. I adore her. I want her on Ladies Night so bad. Jenna, do it. Uh, <laughs> I have been trying. She is a very busy Everyone's lady, trying. as she, she should be. <laughs> as she should be. Oh, man, there's another great... I mean, all the scary movies, like the parodies, are hilarious. All the comedians that get together and just rip on it. I would love to be a part of the next one. What is your second number? Ooh, three. What is something you did for a role that now makes you say, I'm really glad I tried that once, but I don't want to do that again? Ooh, it was what I did for an audition. Oh, so you gotta commit to the bit because I booked a role by bringing, can I say, I'm gonna say it now so I can say it. Uh, I brought a feminine pleasure toy to an audition and I booked it, right? There are certain things, you'll go to certain lengths and it'll pay off. However, for this audition during the pandemic that I did at my parents' home on wooden floors, I sprayed whipped cream, <laughs> whipped cream on my bra in order to audition for the role. And it had a scene where you had whipped cream on you. And I did it four times on Zoom with a whole bunch of people watching. And I will never do that again. <laughs> My acting coach, Leslie Kahn, uh, she recommended that I do it and that I just go for it and that I work with it. And I was slipping and sliding all over the place. Uh, my mom and I got into a fight. She won. I <laughs> cleaned the floor with a toothbrush. Yes. It was a hot, sticky mess, and I did not book it. Wow. <laughs> you didn't book it. I did not book it. But the one that I did bring a fun toy to, I booked, and that is Kay Cannon's movie, My Ex Friend's Wedding, which I'm Kay super Cannon, excited. I sign me up for anything that she touches. I'm in. Yeah. Yes, just uh, bring bring a phallic looking thing to uh, an audition and <laughs> she'll book you. These are great stories. <laughs> great stories. Ladies night, baby. Seriously. It's nice. uh, one more pick. What is your final number? My final number is five. I want your absolute favorite part of the acting process. Ooh. You know, studying up on your character, Ooh. seeing a set for the first time. But then I also want not necessarily your least favorite, but a part of the process where you see room to grow for yourself and try something Ooh. new. Oh, you have the best questions. The best. I love your I don't brain. know what's a higher compliment. Nice bangs or good <laughs> questions? <laughs> nice bangs, nice brain. It's well I moisturized. I don't know if I can keep it together now for the rest of this interview because You're of <laughs> Listen, this is what Ladies Night is about. You hype each other up, okay? So we can go out into the world and be exactly. the powerhouse woman we are. See, you are meant to be on this show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> um, I, man, my favorite part of the process is like recreating and creating with the other creators involved. And by that I mean writing and, and enjoying the rewrites of it all too. And right now we're fighting for our writers, so please give them what they're asking for. It's a very... It's common sense and they deserve it. So, um, writers are just incredible. It all starts with them. and you know, jumping into the script and giving my take. Um, I love improvising on the moment, but I also love taking a joke and seeing how far can I punch it up that feels comfortable in my own mouth and what else can I bring to the table on the day. And I just love throwing spaghetti at the cabinet and seeing what sticks. And sometimes it never does. Sometimes what you think is spaghetti at a cabinet is shit at the fan. <laughs> and it's all over the place, but you run with it. And that's the most joyful part is figuring out what the dance is and then just floating whenever you find it. There's no failure. There's only no. failure when you don't try at all. No, failure is a step to success. What is up, everyone? Oh, welcome back for a brand new Collider Ladies Night with someone who I've wanted on the show for a good while now, Liza Koshy. It's Ladies Night. Thank Ever since so work it, I'm like, your vibe, like I need your energy in my life. And then sure enough, you just kept delivering again and again. And now the time has finally come for Ruby Gilman, Thank Teenage you. Kraken. Thank you. You are someone I try to mirror as an interviewer and a host too. You are so freaking brilliant at your job. Clearly, I'm taking a lot of notes out of your book because when I saw you two weeks ago and you had bangs, I got bangs. Thanks, You're my Club. personal influencer. <laughs> <laughs> this is the highest compliment anyone could give me. <laughs> Usually, I start every ladies' night with the same exact question. You have a little bit of a more unique journey here, so I'm going to switch it up a little. What is the very first thing you ever remembered dreaming of becoming when you grew up? Oh, I want... You can tell by my energy. I watched That So Raven growing up. Uh, <laughs> and just watching her be this human animation and this just fearless, unapologetic physical comedian 
was, it's where I learned all my comedic sensibilities, was from like Keenan and Kel growing up, from Raven, from, you know, Will Smith, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, all of those, like the slapstick of it all, but also the heart of it all, the wit of it all. Um, I feel like I was just, I was raised by the best comedic icons and legends in the biz, and now to work with them is the coolest freaking full circle in the world, yeah. So when you pictured yourself making it, so to speak, was it like going down the, the stand-up comedy route or no. was it being an actor no. and doing comedies? No, <laughs> Listen, people call me the C word and I'm gonna rebrand right now. I am not a comedian. I am a, I did not say I was funny, I said I'm fun. I'm definitely fun. But uh, comedians it's a good are F-word. athletes. It's a great <laughs> F-word, comedy <laughs> F-word all you want. I'm fun. <laughs> but comedians are sp- athletes. What they do is a sport. Their brain, so quick, so, so fast with it. I, I don't think I could do that, but comedic actress all the way. You what? seem so like on it and quick though. It surprises uh, me that you doubt yourself in that respect. Maybe we'll circle back with my Netflix special, but <laughs> I, I, as of right now, a comedian is, yeah, it's, it's up there for me, but no, I'm definitely not. Remember there. what we just said about failure. Never say never. You only fail if you don't it's try. Fair. You don't even fail. You bomb. Like you're fully <laughs> just. Oof. Meanwhile, Die it would scare the shit out of me. Like I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm busy pumping you up. I could never do that. Yeah, see? <laughs> I like, get anxiety just going into interviews if I haven't prepped. I know, but you're so good. That's why, like, your anxiety is you just caring so deeply. That's what it is. And you come in every time with the most detailed questions. I, I say adore. that all the time. Yeah. Anytime I walk into something, someone's always like, "Do you get nervous? You've done a yeah. million of them." I'm like, no, I get nervous every single time and I remind myself I get nervous because yeah, I care. And exactly. if I didn't care, that'd be a problem. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, don't All care. Right. So you get those dreams. Yes, yes, yes. Then you go to college and you study business marketing. Why business marketing? <laughs> Because I went for one year and I had to declare a major, but uh, oh, <laughs> no, I, I get that. I, I get didn't that. have a vision. I didn't have a plan. I just went for one year, and then after that one year, I started going back and forth to LA that summer after my freshman year in college. Uh, go Cougs, University of Houston. Um, but then I I got picked up by my dad uh, at the airport one time after coming back from LA, and he said, do you want to go back to LA and live out there for a gap year and explore your resources out there? And it became a gap decade. This is actually uh, almost almost my 10th year, but 10th year of making content online. I started that when is, I was 17. That is so cool that your dad supported you in <laughs> yeah. that. Because that's a, that's a scary leap to make. And the fact that he believed in you, I have to imagine ups the confidence you have in yourself. Absolutely. And this like character that I'm playing in Ruby Gilman, the Teenage Kraken, is an ode to my mom and dad because they're both theater kids. And I get to play a theater kid in this one. The cool thing I was thinking of, though, when I was driving over here is that there's so many people that know you from your online content, yeah. like back to Vine. But now there's like a whole group of people who who think you were acting first. And I don't know, there's just so many opportunities to discuss, to like first discover the content you're making. And that's yeah. very exciting to me. Thank you. No, what's weird is that they both were happening at the same time, but there was a magnifying glass on social media because of the virality of the internet. So it just took off in, you know, this other lane, but I was also pursuing acting at the same time. Check IMDb. But <laughs> it's true. But yeah, it's 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 interesting. You have, you know, your ten years of silence or your ten thousand hours that you have to pour into acting versus social media is amazing. You've got to put work in. It's 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 a job, but it definitely took less time in that world to gain the recognition I was so lucky to gain. You wanna be an actor, you move to LA I feel like you need to find like the right people to mm. help you, you know, I, I guess put you on the right path to reach the dream in the way that you yeah. want. Because it's not about coming here and just picking up any opportunity. You want to pick up the opportunities that well reflect the things that are most important to yeah. you. So when you moved here and found those people, who yeah. were they? I mean, that is my incredible team at CAA. I got so, so lucky. I had uh, an amazing manager, Courtney Carter, who worked her butt off too. Like anyone I've ever worked with has been such a believer in a dream they can't see yet. And I'm so thankful to those people who, you know, believed in something and invested in something and had faith in something that didn't exist yet. And they, yeah, they poured the utmost care into me. I mean, the team I have now is so incredible. I've gotten <laughs> Luna PR for the win. Thought she was gonna go, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah! <laughs> there it is. But, like, I'm, I'm stepping into a new chapter now, too, of, you know, it feels like that. I mean, in my own 27 woo woo way of, like, my Saturn's returning and, like, my Aries Virgo Virgo, you know, like, <laughs> like the woo woo of it all is, is coming to fruition. The fact that I'm, you know, just entering my late 20s now and, you know, playing more grown up roles, the fact that I feel this internally, the fact that my work resembles the, you know, 
transition in my life too. It's it's all aligning in a really beautiful way that I'm really excited to uh, you know share who I am today and who I've become because I started at 19. You're still figuring out yourself, so to share now is really exciting. I feel so firm in my voice. You should you should feel that way. I have so many follow up questions. The first yeah. thing I wanted to ask so you just highlighted a bunch of your team. You yeah. mentioned someone earlier though, your acting coach, and excuse me because oh I God, forgot yes. I forgot her Leslie first name. Khan. Right? Okay, Leslie. 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 Khan. What is something about the way that Leslie teaches and gives notes? Notes that you think aligns with how you like to receive and process notes. Her whole tagline that she slaps on every pencil, fidget spinner, anything is dare to suck. And it's the best, most freeing, relieving thing <laughs> as an actor to just dare to suck, um, to just go for it, to like not worry about being not perfect. You will never be. And to just throw spaghetti at the wall, you know? like. I think she's she's just a nutcase, and I appreciate who she is. She's just so unapologetically herself, too, and just such a believer. She was an actor, and now she's a coach. And she has the insight of what, it, what it's like to be on camera and the fear that it can bring up and to have good actor thoughts versus bad actor thoughts. You know, you want to believe in yourself. You want to sandwich your thoughts between each line. Like, what would you be if you were actually living in their shoes? You know, what kind of thoughts would you have? And um, she's a really cool methodology that I respect so much. So I recommend her to anybody. Um, watch some videos of her online if you can't afford the classes just yet. Like, get into a class, see if you can share it with a friend. Like, even if it's just a social uh, experiment for yourself to just get out there and try something new. Try improv, try acting. It There's so many rules that you can play by that you know, once you're out of that playing environment there, you can play in life too, and there's a lot of good takeaways from an acting class. To expand that idea yeah. a little, so she makes you fear, feel fearless when you're prepping for a role. Yes. What happens when you get in a sound booth or get on set? Can you give me an example of yeah. a time when a scene partner or a, a director encouraged you to feel fearless and try something right on the spot? Oh my gosh, Trish C. Uh, players. You name drop the best people. I Because I've been so lucky to work with the best people and I've been so lucky to work with female directors, which we need more, but like I've only really worked with female directors and that's a testament like and female uh, cinematographers too and, and uh, videographers and you know female filmmakers are so important for a female on screen to feel comfortable. That was a lot of f alliterations. Yes it was. Uh, <laughs> you handled it well. <laughs> um, but it uh it, it's it creates the utmost like freeing, understanding, emotionally stable, beautiful environment to play in. And Trish C specifically for a scene, I was in a, a scene with Joel Courtney, who uh, this this players that'll come out, uh, I believe next year, Netflix. Ah, whatever, is there an NDA? I don't know, I broke it. Um, but that uh, there was like a moment where you know we were just acting normal, drinking champagne, and they just wanted an, wanted an insert shot, and. I like wanted to go bigger and just get weird for a second. She was like, okay, fun run, like go go at this one. Who knows if it's a blooper, or who knows if it's in the cut. And I just shoved the whole champagne glass in my mouth and like just put it around my mouth and then just chugged it backwards. And it was fun and it was weird and it was apparently in the cut, so I heard. So that's like the dare to suck, right? Like that could have just been so awkward and a lot of times it is. It's incredibly awkward to do this job, but when it hits, it hits. Do you remember the very first time you were working on a film or show or any kind of project where like, you found the power of your voice, where you spoke up about mm. something, someone heard you, and something about that project changed for the better? Oh man, yeah. I think especially as a woman, you don't hear of the cases in which women experience some kind of sexual harassment of some sort and you speak up about it and something actually happens or changes and you don't think it can happen or change or you know it'll have an effect for the better you think you'll be the one that's being a burden you'll think the one you're the one that um, is driving a wedge in production um, when really what you're doing is for the benefit of all women involved all humans involved um, and so I spoke up once on set and I was super hesitant to but after some a quick hour of reflection because you know the turnaround time is quick you want to jump on it while you can um, and make sure it's addressed and nipped in the bud that had a positive change on the environment and I'm so glad I did and those aren't the stories you always hear um, just because you move on and you have a win and you you know you just move on but I had a win and it was a win for all women that day so I'm so so glad I did
Yeah, and I encourage all women, if that's something you're experiencing or going through, it's really hard, it's really tough, lean on your support system and um, speak up. I'm sorry you went through that, but yeah. by speaking up, it causes a ripple effect. It and does. now more fe more people out there will feel comfortable if they find themselves in a Absolutely. similar situation, and that is very important. Absolutely, that's what I hope to. I literally just got chills right now. I'm actually sweating and somehow got goosebumps because it's so important to talk about the wins and not the, you know, I mean, definitely talk about the ones that happened 10 years later, 20 years later, and you have your full circle where your, you know, justice is served. But talk about the ones that happened within an hour, too, because that could have been a decade. Mm -hmm. And I'm just proud of those women that did wait a decade even, too. Just speak up. Makes all the difference yeah. in the world. You belong on Collider, ladies. Yeah. I do! You've been besides it a couple <laughs> times. There's so many things you've said. I'm like, yes, you should be in this seat right uh, now. I'm so honored to be in the seat right now, so thank you. Teetering into Ruby Gilman now. I think a, bro a broader question to start about voice acting, because it feels like you're leaning heavily in that direction, but there's also a lot of live action opportunities yeah, yeah. that you've pursued and that are on the horizon yes. as well. Do you find yourself drawn to one or the other? Or I guess maybe, like, how do you find the most creatively fulfilling balance between the two for yourself? Yeah. Oh my God, beautiful question yet again. Um, I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of voice acting projects coming out right now, and in the press, I'm like, glam for the gods. Like, <laughs> come on, put me on camera too. Uh, I, uh, I, um, man, I'm, I'm so lucky to have been a part of Transformers, Rise of the Beast, RC, once again, a really strong, independent uh, female that I got to play, first female Autobot, and then for this one, Ruby Gilman, I play Margot, and she's this really funky, eccentric, like, pattern blocking theater queen who is just so expressive and so supportive and is once again like a very uh, loud, proud, brown woman. And to be that and then to actually be that is is so exciting. It feels like alignment yet again. But um, it's not really up to me. That's the weird part between social media and, <laughs> I was, I was and the wondering. industry. Is like I can release what I want to release when I can. I can't release the Kraken. Only <laughs> DreamWorks can. So <laughs> I have to go with what their calendar is, and that has been, you know, in flux because of the industry being in flux and whatnot. So there's only so much you can control. But you know, when the time comes, it's the right time for it to come. So. I've had two uh, amazing animation uh, voiceover projects come to light, and you know later on this year and next year I'll have some live action moments, and I'm so stoked for Family Affair and Players, as I mentioned, and filming my ex friend's wedding. So I I just love to creatively express in different ways, and I'm lucky to have the trust from DreamWorks to bring their story to life too. I'm so grateful. So comparing this particular voice acting experience to all the other ones you've done in the past, whether it's Transformers or something that came before yeah. that, what do you think is like a shared quality in a good voice acting experience? Something Ooh. that lets you do your best possible work, but then mm -hmm. on top of that, I also want something specific to the DreamWorks process yeah. that makes it unique that you appreciate. Yeah, oh man. So for animation, I do my own stunts. Um, I get so sweaty in the booth. I've seen and some behind the scenes footage. You go you? for it. You go for it. Oh, I go for it. <laughs> I, I, I'm definitely like, it is SNL broad comedy happening in the voiceover booth. And you get to flail your arms around and then you get yelled at because they can hear your loud windbreaker jacket you decided to wear that day. Uh, but <laughs> I haven't learned my lesson because I always come to the booth like excited to be in a hoodie and be super chill and not be seen. And then come to find out you're seeing BTS moments. <laughs> but also come to realize that I'm overheating and wearing a hoodie and Kirk, our sweet director, and Farron, our sweet director, have to pass me tissues in order for me to put into my armpits. <laughs> well, I've watched another video you did. I watched your GQ video. I'm like, yeah. Where you, where you talked about, like, your favorite product. My panty liners that absorb smart your armpit sweat. Smart idea. Thank you. I, I feel so sweaty in this world. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going back to sweat. But I... I really am so enthusiastic in the booth for Margot because she is a theater queen. She talks with her hands. She is if jazz hands were a person. So I had to be that. And it was so fun. I'd always just like catch a high after being in the booth. And Kurt D'Amico and Farron were amazing directors that made it so easy uh, to explore and experiment and write and have fun improvising too. So. Yeah, a lot, a lot went down, and I'm excited to see what all went in. Can you tell me something about Farron and Kirk as 
not only actors, directors, but as scene partners that you really appreciated, Ooh. and maybe something they did that helped you reach something in your own character that you wouldn't have been able to without them. Oh yeah, I mean, Farron Pearl came through with like different suggestions and inflections all the time, and I loved like having, you know, like we were talking about earlier, having a female filmmaker right next to you, uh, giving you some advice of how to, you know, create this female character that you're stepping into. Um, so she had amazing suggestions, Kirk just as much. Um, they both were so lovely and so open to my ideas and just the amount of laughter and, and obscene words that were said in that booth that they had to cut out because it's a kid's movie. <laughs> like, we just had fun. It I wanted just... to see the R-rated cut. I'll hear it all. <laughs> yeah. give, it, give it a go, DreamWorks. Come on, see what works. <laughs> um, but it was, it was just fun. It was just a good time. That's, you remember how you feel or how someone makes you feel and this DreamWorks family has made me feel so at home. You are getting my last question. It is like my cheesiest, most overly sentimental question. It's something I've gotten in the habit of asking though, because in this industry, we give each other awards, and that is wonderful, but nobody says good job to themselves nearly enough. So whether it's oh. something you did on this film or any other project you worked on, can you tell me something that you accomplished that you can look back on and say like, damn, I am proud of myself and what I did there? Oh my gosh, what a great question. Way to stump me though, hold on. I know, <laughs> it feels like an unfair question to it's ask deep. when I have a hard time doing that for yeah. myself. What would you, what would you give yourself an award for? I'm gonna Uno reverse card on you. I'm like trying to think of favorite, favorite moments. I think one of the things I'm probably most proud of is I got to moderate the Cobra Kai panel at Comic-Con for their second season and I was scared and I crushed it, but most of all, there was a bunch of my friends around me who were just so like genuinely hyped yes. for me. And I just remember both sides of that situation like colliding and like serving each yes. other well. And it makes me proud of myself, but proud of the people that I surround myself with. Yes! Oh, to sh I got you there go. eventually. Now I'm sweating. Yeah. Now I'm sweating. <laughs> I, trust me, there's a puddle of sweat in between my thighs <laughs> on this chair. It's Thank crazy. God I'm wearing black today. It's <laughs> I'm not. Okay, don't rub it in. Um, man, I think that it's moments like that where you get to spend, you know, the, the, the highs with your family, with your friends, you get to, you know, all the planning, all the overthinking culminates into the moment of your performance or the presentation and the interview and you just, you, you catch a high of like, it was worth it. It was worth, <laughs> it was worth the stress, it was worth the caring, it was worth the anxiety. Um, and I think the more you do it and the more you, you become comfortable and I know I'm good at my job. Yeah. The more of an ease and a breeze it feels like. I'm I'm specifically proud of like press can be hard sometimes. But sometimes it's true. Sometimes. <laughs> well aware of it, which is why I put so much work into yeah, it. Yeah, and I so appreciate it because you make it feel so comfortable and so natural and so real and so human. So I appreciate that. Um, instead of like this buttoned up, like yes, <laughs> next question. Um, <laughs> That's not it. <in> <laughs> no, not at all. And I appreciate that. You can tell. Um, but I think like I'm proud of like the press that's going into DreamWorks, and you know the we get to speak on how the story came to be and how many women are behind it and what a girl empowerment movie this is and what a moment this is for Lana being, I think, the first female. Yes, uh, for me. first female title character in a DreamWorks movie. That's huge. It's huge. That's huge, it's historic. We have this incredible cast of women of, of all different generations, like I said, and it's a big it's a big moment and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that in a time that's tougher on women in general to have this relief and this uh, release is, yeah, so important. You should be proud of this whole press circuit, but all the press circuits you do, because always just like oozing good mm -hmm. vibes and positivity. You too. Yet another reason why you belong on Collider Ladies Night. Yay. Thank you for joining me. The door to Ladies Night is open anytime you want to It was back. an honor. I will <laughs> bust through that door anytime you invite me. It is such a joy. Jenna Ortega, you still owe us one. Mm -hmm.